Press the record button, please. What's up, guys? Mike Moo here. This is another video. We're doing an unboxing of a second bedroom TV. This is the Hisense Android TV H65 series 4K Ultra HD. It's got all this stuff over here. Um, the difference between this one and the other Hisense video that I did was this one runs specifically on Android TV, which opens it up to a lot of applications. I mean, 4,000 plus apps and games. That is a ridiculous amount of games. Um, there are some pros and cons about that, but I'd say the pros definitely outweigh the cons. So we're going to go ahead and unbox this TV and we'll do a little quick little setup um, showing you some of the features. Uh, one really special thing about this is that whether you like it or not, it has the Google Assistant in there. So if you could just talk to your TV and say, hey Google, you know, put on YouTube or hey Google, open up Netflix, that could be really useful, especially since with other TV sets, it's kind of hard to navigate. Maybe you can't find a remote control. I'm looking forward to testing that out. Same feet as the other Hisense TV. This is a 55 inch TV, of course. Uh, if you've seen other TV boxes, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, one thing I will probably say about this is that uh, this, you probably want two people, but 55 inch, it's, it's, it's really a good ballpark price right now. Probably the best bang for your buck in terms of features. And it's relatively lightweight. So if you can lift 20 some pounds, you should have no problem getting it out. They have a lot of protective stuff around the TV, obviously. And you'll want to lay it flat in order to put, put the legs on. Anyway, so I'll demonstrate that. So the feet, they look a little bit cheaper than our other units, but uh, the quality is going to be okay. I mean, it's, it's feet. It's not glossy or anything, uh, but it obviously will do the job. There's going to be two screws that we screw in down here below. They're all, of course, included in the, in the packaging. Here's a close-up of the remote control. That's, this kind of gives you an idea who helps to sponsor the TV, what they think is most important. So we got Netflix, we got YouTube, we got Google Play, and we got Prime Video. Those are actually the ones that we like to play the most. Um, obviously this came out before Apple TV was available, so um, it'd be really cool to see if we can reprogram these buttons down here. These are M4 12 millimeter screws in case you need to replace them. Chances are you could probably lose these if you're gonna mount it on the wall. Screwdriver. These feet are actually keyed, so it really should only go in one way. Don't force it. And basically two screws on for each leg. Now, as you can probably tell these legs, I mean, this is probably about six inches apart. This is not gonna be earthquake ready. So if possible, it's good to have a leash um, against the wall, wherever you're attaching it to. In the back, oh, in the back, we actually have analog input. That's something you don't really see on uh, current TVs because who has an analog jack input? So if you want to play it from an old DVD player, it doesn't have HDMI out, that's going to work too. Or even a VCR. So this is, this is okay for VCRs, which is really funny. Um, antenna cable input, so it has a whole tuner in there. It's got the HDMI 4K uh, at 60 hertz with the ARC, which basically is the remote control uh, protocol so that you can actually plug in something like a receiver or speakers, whatever, and it'll be able to uh, communicate with all the other ARC compatible uh, devices. So HDMI 1 is 4K at 60 hertz. Same thing with um, HDMI 2, but it is not ARC for um, HDMI 2. So you're going to want to plug in all the components you want to have all universally controlled in HDMI 1. That's the only one that supports the ARC. It has a third HDMI port, which is also uh, 4K at 60 hertz, has two USB ports, and they are only going to output uh, 5 volts at 0.5 amps. So that means if you're going to do a Fire TV situation on here, you're not going to get enough power from here. Okay, uh, Chromecast, you may or may not have enough power. It depends on the version of the Chromecast that you have. But the USB ports are nice, but it's probably just to read from USB sticks if you want to play something from USB stick. And it has a headphone jack, which is one eighth inch regular headphones. That could be helpful if you want to plug in external speakers. Um, and of course it has a digital audio output 
and has a LAN port. So LAN port is going to be important. If it wasn't already clear from these modern TVs, you'd actually need internet to use them. This is practically going to be impossible to set up without internet. So keep that in mind. You just need a relatively fast download speed. Okay. Rest of the back here, we see that the uh, mounting holes are gigantic. I mean, they're they're just they're just huge. So it's not going to be compatible with some of the wall brackets. Uh, you need to keep that in mind. But you know, maybe yeah, just keep that in mind. I'll, I'll have the specifications down below. All right, that's it for the back. We just plug this in. This is a standard two prong here in the United States. It's not a not an annoying three prong, which also means that this is not necessarily grounded. Always get a UPS surge backup whenever you plug something like this in, if you value your TV at all. Boot up sequence. Well, it's actually got really nice crisp blacks. There is a part just before the sequence that basically asks you what language you're going to be using. I think it's English, French, and Spanish. It'd be really helpful if you actually have an Android phone to go and set up because then it can transfer your phone's Wi-Fi settings and Google account to your TV. But in this case, we're setting it up for my mother-in-law and she doesn't actually have an Android phone. She uses an iPhone. So keep that in mind. You can really skip a lot of this stuff by just logging in through the sequence with your Android phone connecting it there. Here, we're just going to set it up with Wi-Fi. I'm not sure if it's 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. Most likely, it's going to be compatible with 2.4 gigahertz. If you have 5 gigahertz, that's going to be better for streaming Ultra 4K. But again, it really depends on your network equipment. If you can plug in a network jack in the back, that's going to, that's going to be a lot better for streaming but we've been streaming perfectly okay in most days without it. Here we go. This is what it should say. <laughs> okay, sign in, please. Okay, you, you got this part. Too fancy. Accept the terms of service, use your location, yes. Help improve Android, sure. Um, I think Google speaks Vietnamese. You could try it. All right, uh, turn on these settings. Yeah, go ahead, turn it on. A few things you should know. Yep. Yeah, sure. Get the most out of your Google Assistant. Yeah. Choose a name. What do you want to call it? Just mom's TV? You can change the name. Here is a potentially privacy issue, but it's called ACR Auto Automatic Content Recognition. And I'll just go ahead and point out some of the features here. So depending on what you're watching, it's going to try to figure out exactly how to adjust the TV or the sound for what you're watching. Um, but it's going to share your information back to Hisense in order to get the information to help deliver the features to the TV to help figure it out. So it's part of a consortium. And really, I don't think they're going to know anything about you specifically. It's just that you just need to note that it's going to share that information back out. And that's just the way a lot of these TVs are, especially if you get an Android TV, which, of course, is uh, based on Google's operating system. These are the apps that are already built in. Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube, Google Play, and of course, Live TV. And here, YouTube Kids. It's gonna be really great for the current pandemic. Netflix, Google Play, and of course, you can add Disney Plus on there. It's got Google Chrome Cast built in. And of course, it's got the Play Music system here. This remote control, in order to enable the Google features that we were talking about and the smart features, apparently has a Bluetooth module in here as well as the infrared module here up here at the top. So the infrared module, of course, is just the same way any other TV remote control works. But to use the smart features, such as the Google activation button here, where you can talk through your remote and submit that uh, voice recognition information out. Pair the remote control. Just press this button right here and hold it down, and the TV will pair. That's it. That's how you set up the Google. Just this button right over here. We're going to go over some of these settings here on this Android TV. 
Now, it could get a little bit more complicated, but just know that this has way more flexibility than the other TV set that I've seen, uh, Roku TV, and you don't need to adjust most of these things in here anyway. This, again, we went over the name real quick. You'll want to name it something that makes sense because that's going to be how it's identified by your voice recognition technology such as Amazon's Echo. The picture settings are actually quite extensive. You got everything from backlight, tint, sharpness, color temperature, noise reduction, digital noise reduction. Again, you can leave all of this alone. It looks just fine, but if you really want to calibrate it to the specific color and even the, uh, the light bulbs that you use in your, let's say in our case, in a bedroom, you can go ahead and adjust everything there. The sound actually comes out pretty good. I have to say these TVs now, they've learned their lesson and you actually don't need a sound bar if you're gonna be using this in your bedroom. You can hear very clearly and it even allows you some special features such as limp sync and digital audio delay so you can have all your sound sync up in case you run it through a home theater system or some other speakers that have some sort of delay. Inputs. Pretty standard stuff over here, except that you know you got a composite input, which is nice. And then you can also have the inputs control the TV. So for instance, we have Apple TV. I can just talk to the Apple TV and ask Siri to turn on or off my TV just fine, just by the name. Apps, 4,000 some apps. It's amazing, it's awesome. Just keep in mind that um, you only wanna install things that you're going to use. Just uninstall anything you don't want. You can turn on Amazon's Echo service on or off if you want. Same thing with Google. All right, the timer, love the timer. The sleep timer has a lot of different options and granularity that I'm definitely missing on my other TVs. I never use the power on timer, but it could be useful if you wanna wake up to the TV or to the news um, every day or just particularly one time and just have it automatically turn on. That's, I guess that's pretty useful, something I don't really use. Now, storage, you only have 4.3 gigabytes of storage. So be very careful about what you want to go ahead and install in there. And games particularly take up a lot of space, but you know, you can play games on here, even through your own remote, which is pretty cool. Google assistant, um, is, is of course an option. Chromecast is built in, which is fantastic. Here's where you can adjust the privacy settings, usage and diagnostics, and also the, uh, uh, you know, whatever advertising ID that you share. Now to set up assistant, just start you all the way from the beginning again, in case you want to go ahead and reset and start everything uh, from the beginning, like an open box experience. IP, IP control port, something more advanced. That's for people who want to set up uh, home theater uh, automation solutions. It means you can go ahead and control and set those things up separately. Um, security and restrictions basically is about controlling what you can install, um, where you, where your app store is, okay? Whether or not you're gonna allow external sources or whether or not you're gonna allow Google certified. The accessibility is amazing in here. This is of course for people who have a handicap of some sort or even if you just um, want to improve how your TV functions to make it better and easier for you, including a whole bunch of different languages you can choose from that you can go ahead, let's say uh, you wanna speak to your TV in a different language, in your native language, you can install the voice files and then ask Google to go ahead and speak in that language back to you and also allow it to recognize you in your own language as well. Now we tested this out real briefly and we, I mean, I tested it out in Vietnamese and that worked. I don't speak Vietnamese, but I had my uh, cousins go ahead and try that and it worked. Okay. So that was pretty cool. All right. That, that's something that you definitely don't see in a lot of the other TV sets. That's why I, I just, I found this fascinating to try out. Talk back, if, if you have trouble seeing, you're choosing menu options, um, you can just go ahead and um, have it say exactly where the controller is on the menu system. That's very useful. Even if you'd like to watch TV without the screen on, which is pretty useful because, um, you know, my wife actually likes to um, listen to a TV show in the background and just, just makes her feel more at home. Live TV closed captioning capability worked just fine. Uh, we only tested with local TV channels, but there is a lot of stuff you can configure on this TV. And that is something that I truly appreciate this above and beyond the uh, Roku TV uh, that from Hisense that I also did a review on. All right, so I have some initial impressions on this TV set. I'm gonna give it a good recommend, basically because of the price point and the features that you get here. This TV is uh, definitely an improvement over the Roku only base system. I would say that if you have a senior citizen at home 
or if you have someone that is not as comfortable operating a TV set, you want to get the Roku TV. This is at least as good as the Hisense TV that I did in a previous unboxing video review. This costs right now just a little bit over $80 more than the other one, same 55 inch, but it operates on Android TV. Android TV is gonna be significantly better for us tech people or people who are very comfortable with a fancy remote control like this. I mean, this has a built-in microphone with Google and Alexa already built in and a bunch of other features in here that you will never find in a basic Roku TV. This is definitely an, a step up in that regard. As far as the picture quality, I wanna say it's roughly about the same as that. So it's basically a base level, it's good enough for the bedroom. As a main TV, I'd probably wanna upgrade a little bit more, get an OLED one, but we're looking at a couple of thousand dollars more. But this has all the features that you could ever want and all the apps and you can let games uh, be installed on here probably to play to some certain extent with the remote. You want to pair this up with a Bluetooth TV um, through the remote controller setup in here and I won't have that information on this video right now but if you want I can create a separate one. So yeah I give this a high recommend. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me, I'm gonna live out in defiance